all try to, uh, to do something against. And if it's for a local chiropractic, um, com uh, complain uh, about it to their authorities. I mean, they should, should stop giving this false information. I'll take further questions, but I, can I abuse my position as chairman to... I just uh, struck by what uh, Ed Side said about being too self-congratulatory here. So if you are being, I'm going to put a stop to that. Now. <laughs> uh, many years ago, um, there was a big medical scandal in this country and all over, uh, actually, about um, the misuse of benzodiazepines. Uh, patients being prescribed by physicians, uh, doctors, uh, repeated dosages of uh, Valium and Ativan in, uh, in particular, uh, to the point after several months and years they became addicted to them. And whenever they tried to withdraw from them they got severe side effects, withdrawal effects. So their lives were pretty much wrecked by the doctors, the conventional doctors. As a, and it's still going on. It hasn't died. It hasn't gone away. So, patients organise themselves into groups, support groups, lobbying, the politicians who took up their cause, some of them took up their cause, journalists reporting on this uh, dreadful uh, development. And, uh, and met with people from the medical uh, fields as well, all campaigning on behalf of these people. Well, uh, Professor Ernst, where are all these people? You're, you've been very vocal about all these people who have been uh, duped by uh, alternative medical practitioners, but where are they? Are they cheering you on? I don't think so. <coughs> In fact, what they're saying is, um, we want to continue doing this. We want these uh, uh, practitioners. We want to take this medicine. We're happy. So what do you say to that? <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> wow. There are so, so many um, quite outrageous things happening in, in mainstream medicine. Uh, and, and to me, this is just reinforcing what we basically all said earlier. Skepticism doesn't need to be applied to one field of medicine, it needs to, to be applied to all fields of medicine. Can I answer that question? People don't like to own up to having been duped and being made fools or being made no worse. And it's much nicer to think that, well, that nice person was kind to me and I'm no better, but I'm going <coughs> something else. Um, back to my own fields, um, We've got people who tell lies about IVF, um, which only works 20-30% of the time. Um, and, you know, I, I, there's a whole that for all these millions of babies that sell newspapers, because there's, that a lot of this is about the selling of newspapers and stories and hope, um, <laughs> but that for every number they invent in the IVF industry about how many babies that are joints of any age, it's a fantastic thing. Um, but there is, you know, multiply that by three, the millions of people who didn't work for. And I started working with some fertility skeptics. Um, uh, and these are women who daren't say their names, they daren't tell their parents, they wasted £20,000 on many types of IVF that didn't work. Um, and out there is a lot of, uh, particularly in obstetrics and gynaecology, a lot of shame, a lot of. Um, blame, uh, quiet pain that we see in the clinics and I think doctors are privileged to see people who are very hurt and upset by the disappointments of life and their alternative and conventional practitioners but people do not get up. It's quite hard when you're poor in the inner city areas to campaign about junk food shops or you know, patient empowerment movements and I think there is, there is a whole research in community based participation and patient activism. But you know, people have to be angry and they have to be empowered, they have to be educated, they have to you know, be able to use skills to challenge. Uh, this is a very educated white male audience, um, very privileged, and it's really hard to fight these enormous forces out there. I recall, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I recall a survey by a witch, this is the consumer legacy witch, survey of people who had used alternative medicine and 80% were satisfied with it. 
Must be the massage parlors. That's because I pay for it. If you want to go to acupuncturist and have needles stick in to all parts of your body, go ahead, but don't make any false health claims. No, there are clinics that offer acupuncture for addiction, and there is proof that it doesn't work for addiction. So. It's, if, if that's your hobby, go ahead, but don't call it health care. The same with the massage. If you like the massage, go ahead, but don't claim that it's good for your health. It's nonsense. Oh, that's that's the I'm just familiar with well, the, 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 the figure still stands. These people go to, to an acupuncturist with back pain and they're satisfied with it. So, so they're being helped. But they, uh, we, we, we might agree that it doesn't really work. Uh, but they're still satisfied. Why are they satisfied? Because they get something from from the acupuncturist, uh, empathy, attention, explanatory <coughs> models why they are suffering, etc., which they do not get from the GP. And here we 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 sit on this panel and say we, we are all doing very well in medicine. It's not fair because actually I don't think people think do that. <laughs> Um, can I just comment about the provisional nature of scientific and medical evidence um, and uh, the changes that happen? So with benzodiazepines, it's not necessarily that doctors were deliberately prescribing uh, medications that they knew were going to be harmful. It's just that with the passage of time, it became very clear that these things were harmful. And there have been constant revolutions in basic drugs that GPs prescribe every day. Uh, HRT, non-steroidal <coughs> anti-inflammatories, antihypertensives that we just assumed did something helpful and then we find they're actually harmful. Uh, and, and it is very difficult. There's a vast amount of evidence out there. But some of it is difficult to analyze how good the evidence is and I, I cannot sit and read every paper. One policy that I ad adopt is being a slow adapter. <laughs> which is that when new evidence comes out, I don't leap on the bandwagon, I wait and see what happens with the passage of time. Well, any more questions? Yes. Um, I think you're missing a very important distinction between placebos and proper medicine that works, <coughs> because placebos are culture-specific, uh, whereas if you've got tuberculosis and we know what the bug is sensitive to, you will get the same cure rate, whether you're left-wing, right-wing, French, British, African, clever, stupid, it doesn't matter. But placebos are very different because it's, the nature of the placebo depends on your culture. And I think you're all also rather underestimating the power of placebo effects. And when you say that conventional medicine simply adds placebo effects to conventional medicine, it's often the other way around. The placebo effect in, in, the, in many proper trials of conventional medicine is often, often larger than the specific effect of the medication. And that's true not just of uh, psychotropic drugs, where it's particularly true. It's true of pain relief. It's true of even things like antihypertensives. And the problem we have is to try and somehow use placebo effects, and, but I don't know how we do it, because to educate patients about them risks losing a lot of the power of the placebo effect. But, um, but it, there, are, there is research that says even if you tell people this is a sugar pig, pill, uh, they get better. But I think there are limits on that. And just one final point. James says that a lot of his patients are too poor to use um, alternative medicine. I'll bet quite a few of your patients leave your clinic and go to the church, and they touch holy relics, and they speak to priests, and that is placebos on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, I'll, I'll just ask the panel to comment on that, because uh, we, we have some more points, or, or yes? Yeah, um, I'm, just, I'm just following up on that. I'm very interested in the um, public, for those of you working in the National Health, and um, particularly you working in a, in a city area, that's where I live, in the, in the city area of London, with a large amount of poverty. Um, so it seems to me that, you know, there's certain things like, for example, maybe obesity, that doesn't happen overnight. Maybe the causes of obesity are something way back to do with, you know, and they need to be, what needs to happen against that is not longer 
um, you know, consultancy times, of course, that's impossible on the NHS, um, but some something deep education. Um, and I just wondered if you felt, and if, you know, this feels to me that it needs a much more joined up approach, it's not just medicine, it's other areas, and I wondered whether or not you felt there was anything happening there that was positive, any, I mean, you know, I'm talking about people who may not have a supportive family, may, may be excluded from the school, you know, real, you know, if, if there was anything you felt that was changing or getting to those people. We'll just have to leave you wondering for a moment. Okay, um, sorry. Uh, just to, <laughs> we, we might, I'll, we'll yeah, go back sure, to the sure. panel. Um, <coughs> yes, you have a point. Uh, Chairman, quick, quick we, point. Y yesterday we had, in the last couple of days, we've had a couple of lectures about magic and how misdirection works and specifically how if a magician, and I am one such as a hobby, if a magician is seeking to misdirect, they will not only move their hand, but indeed their gaze. And we had demonstration of that. In fact, it's more than that. Not only move your gaze, but your whole body. Take a step towards the, 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 uh, uh, the spectator or, or towards the direction that you wish the spectator to look and turn your head. It's a whole body thing. Now that applies to placebo. Being nice, as James undoubtedly is, provides a degree of placebo effect. But lay it on with bells and whistles and little needles and magic pills, that, that is carrying misdirection a step further. The theatrical placebo described in relation to acupuncture. All placebo is a placebo. Some are very much more theatrical and they probably do work better. Okay, good point. A paper. I think you have a paper. You'll have to write a paper. I'll write a paper. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yes. I need to ask the, the panel whether you're aware of Ben Goldacre's book Bad Pharma. And I noted the yeah. references to the Lancet and the good science that, um, and the evidence-based science that underlies modern medicine. Um, but there is a there's, there's a problem which he highlights to a shocking extent that, that doctors' information about drugs is distorted by the, the evidence that isn't made available by the studies that are done, which are then published. And so we don't get a proper picture of the side effects or the effectiveness of drugs. And things like the Cochrane Collaboration are doing great work to, um, to pull together what the evidence we do have, but we've got an incomplete picture, which, which as, as you were saying at the end there, makes it very difficult for doctors. You can't read every paper. Want good, reliable summaries, and, and we've got the drug companies who have a bias. They want to sell their drugs um, and make money from the research <coughs> process that they've invested in, um, and that can that can lead to distortion, which are bad for, for mainstream medicine and for doctors. Can we say something? Yes, the audience. Let's go back to our panel now and address any of the questions. Well, just like James Mason, uh, as a doctor, you don't jump on. The Soon. So if there's a new drug coming out, we say, ah, interesting. And you know, we wait for more research and then we wait for the experts in the field uh, that we trust to give an opinion. And they say it's no better than drug X, but it's only more expensive, we're not going to use it. If they say, well, it's a lot better and the higher price uh, is, is justified for this better quality drug. Uh, yeah, we might use it, but uh, we, we are not uh, uh, passive about uh, what, what uh, the big pharma says. Mm -hmm. Very nice that they make new drugs, but we wait and we evaluate if it's really important uh, uh, improvement for our practice before we start using it. And every uh, 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 society of doctors has, has, has guidelines for that. And before it enters the guidelines, it has to really prove itself. And uh, that takes a few years <coughs> before uh, uh, that's the case. So it's not not true that as soon as a drug is on the market, the doctors prescribe it like machines. Yes. Um, and if I could just come back very briefly to, to the question about is there other stuff going on? In our GP practice, we have a gardening group, we have a reading group, we have an art therapy group. 
um, and we try and promote social links. We have friendship groups, for, befriending groups for people who are lonely and isolated. Uh, and, and I think all these things are, are important. The problem is that really it's, it's a bit of a, a strange thing that GPs in the medical profession are taking on what are some social yeah. things. Uh, and, and I think what, what we're increasingly realising, particularly with the ageing population, is what we need is robust communities. <laughs> that is, people who look after each other and are used to... Uh, uh, don't panic when illness strikes and you're able to absorb it and look after each other without going to the doctor and I think that is where we need to look to the future. Where, where is it uh, In Kennington, just south oh, of the river. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think also you've brought up some major issues around the greatest health gains are actually the public health ones, you know, clean water, sanitation, back to the global burden of disease, uh, many of the things that that will deal with that are out with the private co the consultations between doctors and patients. Um, and we've got a problem, which is we've got a corruption of our public health system. Uh, industry, big in, the big, in, big industries and the big vested interests are in bed with the top of public health. And I've had some dealings with people up and you go there. We know full well that the price of alcohol will change the nature of diseases and people don't take it on. We know that the transatlantic, whatever it is, bit of politics, is trying to consumerise healthcare. Yeah. We know that there's a lot of problems uh, with patient lobby groups now being paid for by pharmacy. Uh, it's untrue that people won't um, make sell some doctors won't prescribe immediately. There are invented diseases of hypoactive sexual desire uh, with invented chemicals that fail to work somewhere else mm. that are unusable after alcohol have been taken for a long time and sprout chemicals paid women to pretend that there was a problem of feminism, that we haven't got enough drugs like Viagra and you know it's just sold for 25 billion, it's going to be prescribed <coughs> everywhere for an imaginary disorder. Um, so I think there are some real problems yeah. uh, with vested interests, there's some real problems with public health and we, when I, many of my colleagues who are you know the leaders of the profession, they go to the NIHR and various other sort of mentoring research schemes and they're told your job is to create health and wealth and that's that's a terrible mistake and um, you know it, it just uh, I don't know what to say about it because it's it's so deeply distressing um, but I think international corruption um, back to the health false health claims we just have to work brick by brick and statement by statement and crime by crime and lie by lie uh, to nail some you know really difficult powerful things and we've got people trying to change the law of this country changing the law of medical negligence Morris Satchi just saying let's uh, you know, bully people by with laws to be more innovative. You know, it's it, these are there are sort of nonsenses yeah. out there. That was a bit depressing, but I'm quite a cheerful optimist at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> about your contributions. Um, I think they've been very interesting and very informative. And I uh, congratulate our panel for a very spirited defence of the medical establishment. <laughs> <laughs>